Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage the WowGo 2S Pro. This is the current entry-level board in WowGo's lineup of electric skateboards, and it is held up as quite possibly the single best budget-friendly board on the market today. But the real question that the world needs to know about is just how good is the WowGo 2S Pro as an entry-level board for somebody, say, six foot one, thicker build, bald head, with very limited board sport experience. I'm asking for a friend. Now that is a question worth pondering. Simon Says Review. Today I'm heading south. I'm taking the ferry across the St. Lawrence River to show off the WowGo 2S Pro on what is arguably the best stretch of quality asphalt anywhere near Quebec City. The autumn air is crisp, the sky is vivid blue, and the speed demons are whispering in my ears. Let's get after it! If, just like baby over here, you are new to the fascinating and fast-moving expensive world of electric skateboards, well, WowGo is a Chinese board manufacturer that sits somewhere, oh, I think, in the middle of the pack, I would say. From what I can gather, they are mostly known for the great quality parts that they put onto their boards and that they sell at some ridiculously low price. Go China! They've been sending the WowGo 2S Pro to literally hundreds, if not thousands, of up-and-coming YouTubers, including yours truly. Thank you, Ivy. I appreciate it. To be clear, I did not pay a single dime for this board. It was sent to me freely, but it comes with no strings attached. I am not sponsored by WowGo in any way. I am my own man with my own opinions, and I am certainly no corporate puppet for any company, foreign or domestic. Well done, very credible. Here's your cut. Dude, get out of here. Out of the four boards that WowGo currently sells, the 2S Pro sits at the bottom of the pack. It's their entry-level budget, cheapest board. If you are so inclined to get your grubby mitts on any one of these boards, including the one I'm gonna spend the next 12 to 15 minutes flapping my gums about, then make sure to check out their website. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. Ooh, they just added a fifth board to their lineup. Yeah, well, maybe something to look at next spring, because as my boy Kit would say, Winter is coming. It is almost here, actually. Never mind, let's look at the numbers. Spec sheet. There are two 500 watt hour hub motors in the rear wheels. Rear, 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 rear. In the rear wheels, with a simple push of a button, you can toggle between the various speed modes. This is useful according to your mood, your experience, and the terrain you're riding on. No belt drive option for this one. Entry-level board, sorry. It's got a 12 S2P 50.4 volt battery. Oh, really? It does say here that the battery has a better torque for a lower current output than 10S batteries. Sure, marketing bullet point, I believe you. The board weighs 7.8 kilograms, that's 17.2 pounds. It's got a 20 to 25 kilometer range, that is a little bit more range when you're going downhill, a little less when you're going uphill. And if I may point out, 20 to 25 is actually better than the one with XR. It comes with a new V3 Hobbywing electronic speed controller for all my lay brothers and sisters out there who have no freaking idea what an electronic speed controller does. Simply put, it is the electronic components that control the acceleration curve and the brake force in response to your controller inputs. What, you didn't know that electric skateboards come with a controller? They do. The deck is a bamboo slash Canadian maple slash fiberglass composite board. It's got some amount of flex to it if you step in the middle of the thing, which I gotta say is very helpful with bumps in the road and whatnot. Some other boards out there are way more flexible. This is a semi-rigid deck. That's what she said! Woo! WowGo has a bunch of warehouse all over the world. They've got it in the US, they've got it in Canada, Europe, Australia, and of course Asia. So 
Shipping costs and taxes are absolutely minimal whenever you order in any one of these territories. Which I gotta say, after being slapped with a thousand dollars extra in shipping and taxes for the One Wheel XR, I do appreciate the warehouse world domination approach. Now, on any given day, the WowGo 2S Pro sells at around 429 US dollars. That's 545 Canadian dollars. But WowGo tends to have sales every now and again, like 50 bucks off, 70 bucks off. And if you use my personal referral code right here, you get an extra five bucks off. <laughs> hey, come on, man. I'm just starting over here. Give me time. At some point, I'll get you a hundred off, all right? After 400 kilometers of use and abuse, I gotta say the WowGo 2S Pro holds up pretty well. I have not been going easy on this board, far from it. In the first few hours of riding this thing, I accidentally drove it straight into a brick wall. Oh, whoops. I have mistakenly flipped it at very high speeds, which had the effect of scraping a whole lot of the grip tape off the board. Whoopsie. But whatever damage you can see on this board currently are all cosmetic and superficial. No screws ever came loose. No bolts ever came undone. This baby's nailed down tight. It feels really sturdy. As a matter of fact, I had to loosen up the bushings quite a bit to get the proper feel that I wanted to have. I love the 95 millimeters front wheels on this thing. I am constantly amazed at how good they are to just run over cracks and bumps in the road. Like they are consistently better than any high-end, regular ass longboard that I've tried back in my day. And all the electric components underneath the board are pretty well protected from bumps, scratches, splashes, that kind of thing. Which is surprising to me for an entry-level board. The deck is very sturdy, right? The pinning and maple in that thing mixed with the bamboo gives it a perfect combination of flex and durability. Not only does Canadian maple produce the best biological sugar anywhere in the world. Actually, I don't like maple syrup. I know, right? Come to think of it, I don't like hockey or beer. So am I really Canadian? My point is Canadian maple is very, very sturdy. And like I said, driving this thing full force into a brick wall at 40 kilometers an hour, the nose has been bruised, but I was surprised at how well it took it. I have put 380 more kilometers after that accident and it still holds up. I trust it completely. One complaint though, the charging port cover is flimsy as hell. Every time I have to charge the battery, I find myself delicately handling the charge port like it's a baby hamster that I could squish in my oh so powerful fingers or something. Other than that, I am pretty impressed with the build quality and how well it's been holding up to all this abuse and all damage has been completely superficial. So, you know what? I, I think I got an idea. I ordered this grip tape in the hopes of making the board all pretty again, but this got damaged in the shipment. I mean, look at it. I think this would arguably be worse than the one that's on right now, so. Well, never mind the free board. I'm already out 10 bucks now. God damn it. Versatility. Hey, uh, have you ever tried to skateboard on gravel, fine sand, or fields of grass? Well, I tried, and let me tell you, it's not great. Just by looking at this thing, it should come as no surprise that the WowGo 2S Pro is primarily designed for street riding. Barring some DIY kit I'm not aware of out there, it doesn't have a belt drive option, there's no swapping for much bigger wheels, there is no swapping hub motors for anything else, really. To be clear, if you must go into the grass or the gravel or the sand, the WowGo 2S Pro will allow you to brute force it. Oh, Jesus. But it makes for a shaky, uncomfortable ride. It's like when the going gets tough, I'd rather hop off the board and have it dutifully walk beside me like some dystopian future dog. Come here, boy. Wait for me. Important to note, the roads, the sidewalks, they're all terrible out here. 
I mean, canyon-sized cracks and meteoric impact potholes is what I'm dealing with on a daily basis. Ah, oh, come on. The city also has numerous boardwalks and cobblestone streets and brick path that may look very charming and old-timey to the tourist's eye, but are horrible to the e-boarder's feet. This was horrible. So exploring on a whim and wandering off the beaten path with an e-skate in Quebec City is not a good idea. Now, your city might be very different. I know that in Singapore, I would have a jolly old time riding this thing as fast as it can go because, ladies and gentlemen, equatorial asphalt does not suffer the same trials and tribulation as does the asphalt that you can find beyond the wall. Careful, lads. The asphalt sucks around these parts. If you can manage to find yourself a nice flat stretch of good quality asphalt, that's when this rocket really comes alive. So if you're looking for a light up the street, fast and furious ride, and if you like to scare the living hell out of unsuspecting joggers, then this puppy is going to be all you can handle. until the speed demons start demanding more out of you. Accessibility. At first glance, this does not look like a complicated machine. I mean, four wheels, a deck, a hand controller with a, uh, let's call it a thumb wheel. A thumb wheel that makes you go forward when you roll it up and brakes when you roll it down. Easy to understand, easy to operate, right? No. Wrong! Okay. Just calm down. There's a pretty important hand-feet coordination that needs to happen in your brain at all times when operating one of these things. And I must say, I'm surprised. This does not come naturally to all people. Even if you have good board sport experience, the fact that you're controlling this thing with your hand and need to brace your feet and shift your weight in accordance to what your thumb is doing, it, it takes a little used to. Just ask my buddy, Jason. The braking proper, that's the most confusing. I would go so far as to say that it takes a fair amount of practice before you're able to do things without explicitly having to think about it. Now, it did come pretty easy to me, but for some of my buddies, even after five hours, they were struggling with this thing. It is not specific to the wow go. It's something that all electronic skates will, will cause, but still, it can be a substantial hump for accessibility. I trust my daughter on the One Wheel XR, but I do not trust her with this controller. So far, she has not been able to master the hand-feet coordination. Now, as it pertains to the WowGo 2S Pro now, I figured that an entry-level board of this caliber would probably lack the punch or the aggression of a top-tier board like the WowGo AT2, for example. But what I did not realize initially is how much of a punch we're starting from. If the AT2 brings some frightful Mike Tyson knockout power, what the Twist Pro has is some Manny Pacquiao knockout power. I am of two minds about this. On the one hand, it raises the accessibility bar that much higher, makes it a bit more scary, a bit more precarious. It makes it slightly less approachable than you would think right off the bat. On the other hand, if you can get over that hump, then all that speed and powers opens up a very high ceiling for you to grow into without ever having to upgrade, pretty much ever, if you don't want to spend zillions of dollars. I've been able to reach 44 kilometers an hour on this bad boy. And let me tell you, at this point in my career as an e-skateboarder, 40 kilometers an hour will scare the pants off you. I mean, the speed demons, they're getting a mouthful every time I step onto this board, dude. So how accessible is it? Eh, it depends on the rider, I suppose. But as far as I'm concerned, the WowGo 2S Pro lets you know immediately that it is not for the faint-hearted. And if you're scared off by this board, then this sport is not for you. But if it gets its hooks in you, this board can carry you a long, long way into the wonderful world of electric skateboards. Hail 
climbing. Okay, with all that speed and power, how fares the WowGo 2S Pro in the steepest hills of Quebec City? Well, uh, that bad, huh? I didn't say that. Well, it kind of sounds like that's what you're saying. Much like the one wheel XR, it can get all the way up these steep hills, but you just gotta have good momentum going into the climb, man. Because if you don't, you just find yourself essentially riding an old people lift chair. At least that's my experience with my 102 kilos because my buddy Alex and his measly 75 kilos flies up the hill like the dude is riding a Saturn V or something. Oh no. Goddamn bastard. I'm saying I'm fairly heavy and the board struggles carrying my heavy ass up the steepest hills. Bring on though. I come at a crossroad here. Either I gotta shed some pounds or, and this is the technical part, I should just get myself a much more powerful board. Dude, you already have one. Oh yeah. You want some of this? Do you want? Shh, hey, hey. Shh. Sorry, boss. Now for the downhill part, provided that the road is not too busted out, downhill is an absolute blast on this board. The brakes on this thing are phenomenal. I mean, going at full speed down the hill, I'm able to break within 10 of 12 meters and that's, you know. Ha ha. But again, you gotta be ready before you pull on those bad boys because the board is gonna stop and you're gonna carry on if you're not bracing for it. I believe I can fly. Just like the one wheel Teslas or any other hub motors, this will use the friction to sort of recharge your battery a little bit. If you are running a full battery, you could potentially overcharge your board as well. As a warning, the controller will start vibrating like crazy. And that my friends is as far as I've been willing to test it because on this goddamn street skateboard, if the brakes no longer function on a 30% incline with my heavy ass riding it, dude, dude. This thing becomes a bobsled. 99 out of the way, no brakes! So if hills or inclines are not really a thing in your neck of the woods, and if crappy asphalt is the exception rather than the rule, you should be good. Fun factor. <laughs> Simply put, I've been having a blast riding this board for the 400 plus kilometers I've put on it so far. Much more than I expected, if I'm honest. Somehow I was afraid that everything would taste like styrofoam after spending a thousand kilometers riding the elitist one wheel XR, right? Right. And thankfully I was wrong. Damn it. Electric skateboards handle completely different than one wheels. They got better range, they're more stable, they are way, way more aggressive. High speeds are consistently higher, but more importantly, they engage a very different part of your brain, right? Having to deal with this thing, it's more its more video gaming, almost VR-like in terms of experience, if that makes sense to you. <laughs> Plus, you don't have to worry about surprise nosedives with this thing. I mean, you can still have some gnarly, dangerous wipeouts riding a skateboard. But when that happens, it is always due to human error or crappy roads, I guess. Ah! And in the eventuality that your battery fully runs dry, well, there's no walk of shame with a skateboard. You can still push kick this thing all the way home. I mean, it's a heavy long board to push kick it, but you can still do it. We And if you absolutely have to pick up the board because you're checking in in a hotel, going up or down some stairs, the board, although slightly heavy, is easy to carry and it is no more cumbersome than any old regular longboard. People will not second glance at you carrying this thing. Whereas carrying a one wheel anywhere is the inverse proportionality of coolness than it is riding it. Now, admittedly, an electric skateboard like the 2S Pro does not generate nearly as much curb attention as the one wheel XR does. And I do love my curb attention, folks, but it is still a whole lot of fun on its own terms. And every day, I just want to ride it more and more. Mm -hmm. 
More. 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 Final thoughts. Well, they say that you never forget your first. And I agree. As a matter of fact, just ask a... Uh, what was her name again? Anyways, I'm glad that the WowGo 2S Pro was my first electric skateboard. It is as approachable as any other board out there. I mean, the board looks good. It handles great. The curve acceleration and the brakes are very, very good. Once you get used to it, it'll finicky at first, but you'll figure it out. It's powerful. It's relatively portable. So if you are considering dipping a toe in the crazy, crazy world of electric skateboards, then I would argue that you cannot do better than the WowGo 2S Pro, at least not at this price, because the WowGo 2S Pro punches well above its weight class. still here good i just wanted to take a few seconds to thank you all for watching these videos and if you've made it this far press that like button subscribe tell a friend share this with your mom she might be into skateboarding you don't know until you try every little bit helps and who knows maybe one day i'll get to do this full time what hey i'm allowed to dream okay that's it take care of yourselves and i'll catch you down the trail Ciao, bye.